Howdy, Buffalo Bart here, and welcome! Alright, what I'm going to do for today, and this is going to be kind of a short video, is I am going to be creating, yes I have Unreal Engine 4 up, I'm going to create, and if I can find where I started it here, what I'm going to be calling the TB4, or Try Before You Buy templates. So, what I have done, and I don't see it. I've already created the uh, the clone of it, and it is not popping up. So what I'm going to do is close this really quick, and I'll reopen Unreal Engine 4 because it doesn't show up. So as soon as this comes back up, we'll see if it shows up then. But what it, the try before you buy templates are is a way for people to try out an asset pack for more specific right now the um, well son of a gun I don't see it um, try out like the Cindy Studios asset packs before you actually buy them so you can actually see what they're like and even though I created it it is not showing up even in the file list so let's do it again what I did was I went to my simple multiplayer template and I am going to right click and select clone and I'm going to change the location to the normal My Documents and Unreal Projects. Select that folder, and we're going to call this TB4 underscore template. Hit Create and Continue. And hopefully it'll make it this time. I have quite a few projects I need to start clearing out a few more. Like this right here, I don't need that anymore. Um, the TB4 sci-fi template is already uploaded, and if you haven't seen that, then it's worth taking a look at. And it did not work again. That's quite interesting. Done this a hundred times, and it always works. And this time it is absolutely not working. I am in the same folder I told to create in. Unreal Projects. And it is not there. So this is the folder I told to go to. And looking at it in here and nothing. So let's actually go ahead and delete a couple. I know that can't be the problem. I know I have plenty of hard drive space. I know that's not a problem. But I'm going to start dumping a few of these old projects. I don't need that one. I don't need this one. So let's take a look and see what I was doing wrong here. And again, I've done this quite a few times. Hit clone hit browse, go to the folder I want it to go to, and we're going to select folder, choose project name and location, TB4 template, so you can see, uh, why is it telling it to go there? don't create why is it now telling it to go to that welcome to Unreal Engine 4 random issues from time to time just kinda have to roll with the punches um, let's do this one more time My Documents, Unreal Projects, Select Folder, and it's saying Symbol Multiplier 2. We don't want that. We want TB4 Template, and let's try selecting a folder again, and now maybe it'll actually try to create it and 
continue. And there we go. Don't ask me what the deal was with that, but there's another issue for 419 for you. <laughs> so let's go into that. And I'll go ahead and dump this off to the side and minimize it because I don't need that now. Now, creating this template, what I'm going to be doing is setting up a template to be specific for the Cinti Studio stuff. So what I'll do is I will import one of the asset packs and it's only really because I need the skeleton but you know what I want to do is have it set up to where everything is already retargeted, the animations are already set up everything is ready to go so all I have to do is go in and retarget the animations or retarget the actual skeletal meshes to work with a specific skeleton that I've already created that is already mapped to all the animations and so forth so I can quickly just drop in one of the Cinti Studios asset packs and roll with it. Uh, one of their upcoming ones that they're getting ready to introduce is just a the, the forest only or trees and that kind of stuff. Don't restore. There was nothing to restore because I haven't had this project open before. Um, so, what it is, I'm putting it all together in my simple multiplayer template. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Editor Preferences because it never saves my settings. So, I hate autosave. I save frequently enough to where I don't have to worry about it. So, I'm going to disable that. And... I shouldn't need to change anything else in this and if I hit play then what's going to happen is it will show my basic template the way it's already set up in my simple multiplayer template. Alright so that being said it loads Steam in the upper right hand corner so you've got your Steam username and avatar that is only important if you want to use multiplayer with this template so you would just click on multiplayer and host find or you can just click on single player and it'll actually go to um, the menu and if you hit single player then it'll actually load into the map and you'll be able to walk around but what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of the UE4 mannequin so that we can actually have the Cindy Studios mannequin in and main menu everything works so we can go from there now I want to go ahead and set up in the characters folder. I don't need my red man. I can get rid of that because that was for something else that I haven't used in quite a while. Um, so we can delete that folder. Um, so inside there I want to create a new folder called animations. And that's sufficient enough need another one that I'm going to call Mesh. And really this is good enough for for the, the biggest part of it but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up my Epic Launcher and I'm going to pick one of the, the Cindy Studios templates. Oh so many assets. Um, sci-fi, western, heist, um, city pack's probably going to be the easiest and most generic. It's a great pack, don't get me wrong, but, um, yeah, I'm going to use utilize that one. Because if you're going to buy any of them, this would be a great starter one. Um, I would... I would definitely say get this one, the city pack and the heist pack together and you'll do pretty good um, or if you want you know sci-fi definitely get the sci-fi or whatever you can get whatever you like but if you're gonna get the uh, modern stuff then I'd say get the city and the uh, the heist together remember what I'm actually working on here TV4 template add a project so 
it'll go ahead and add this in here and um, for now we're going to minimize these guys so it's there we have it added in so we can go to the meshes folder characters and you can see that we have one skeleton and I'm just going to take that that right there and I'm going to drag a copy of it to here and I'm going to hit F2 and rename that I'm going to call this my polygon skeleton and then I'm going to go back to my characters again and even though this is not really mandatory since I'm not doing this specifically for this particular asset pack but I can actually save this one as that um, I'm going to select all the skeletal meshes and I'm going to right click on any of them I'm going to go to skeleton and assign skeleton and I'm going to change that over to polygon skeleton it's the, the first one on my list and I'm going to hit accept in fact what I ought to do is go ahead and make another clone of this one once I do this and set up the tribe before you buy for the the city uh, pack now you do have to keep selecting the polygon skeleton for each one of these but that's not a big deal we can go ahead and hit uh, save all and now when we go to do our animation all we have to do is go to our mannequin folder go to our character folder and you've seen me do this a, th a thousand times go to this right here we're going to go to our skeleton first and we need to make some changes to our skeleton we need to change it over to select humanoid rig and this is in the retargeting manager if you don't have this tab open then just click right here it'll open it up for you you don't have to worry about changing any of these things but I, you do need to click on the upper arm and rotate it up by 50 on both sides and lower arm rotate it back by 20 I used to do it by 30, but 20 works out a little bit better now. And then I want to do modify pose and select use current pose and save. And now our mannequin is ready to be retargeted over to the um, the animations. So now all I have to do is go to our third person animation blueprint, right click on that, retarget animation blueprints, duplicate, and now select our polygon skeleton. As you can see, there's nothing here so we can fix that really quickly and if we go to our mesh polygon skeleton and we open it up we can see it has a mesh so all we have to do is just click on apply to asset and now it's going to use this guy as our our sample so we can hit save and close and now when we go back into our animations right click on our animation blueprint retarget duplicate polygon skeleton now we have our guy there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace in the replace box I want to get rid of the third person underscore and I'm just going to change this to polygon underscore I didn't have to put the underscore in there I'm just weird so you got to change and we're going to change the folder where we want to extract to or copy it to and it's my characters animation folder so everything is all set now all I have to do is hit retarget and it will retarget that animation blueprint and all the animations necessary that were in that including the blend space so now we can hit save all now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go to my maps go to my lobby map which is where we're actually going to play once we get into the thing go to a selected viewport and now we want to change our character out and what I want to do there is go to my world settings and open up this so we can see inside of our game mode our default pawn class is player underscore base that's fine so now what I want to do is come over to my player underscore base go into here and then look at my viewport click on the mesh we're gonna change our skeletal mesh over to any of our polygon characters so we want to do female police or female jacket or male jacket or male hoodie um, let's see businessman suit that's lovely and now we need to change our animation class over to polygon animation blueprint compile and save you can see he's already animating here so we're good to go now when we hit play we have our dude
Now, the one thing that bugs me here is whenever I hit play in the standalone viewer, I always get a mouse cursor. And I have to click somewhere to get it to go away before I can do anything. So, a way to fix that is go back into your player character and under event begin play all you have to do is add a couple things in first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and set input to game only and we want to get a reference to our player controller and then we want to go ahead and do set show mouse cursor and leave that as unchecked and that's good and I'm just going to begin play so there we go that's all we needed to do so now when we hit play bang no mouse cursor issue it's not a big deal it doesn't affect anything when you're packaging your game or whatever else but it's always good to start it off with a, a clean slate that way um, I also have, you can see in my player character, um, the escape menu functionality. Um, I always have this template already preset up with the inputs, the plugins, everything is ready to rock and roll. However, if you're wanting to put in like input action escape menu, if you want to add a key binding in, and let's go ahead and, and create something a little bit different. Let's add a view change. So let's actually just make that a little bit interesting we want to add another camera in and we'll call this our FPS camera so I'm going to select the mesh add new component and I want a camera and with that camera I'm going to tell it to socket to the head now it's always going to be a little bit stupid looking whenever you first do it for some reason um, you're gonna have to rotate it so let's go ahead and rotate that up 90 degrees rotate it around 90 degrees and you're gonna have to move the positioning out a little bit here and there um, not a big deal I'm just gonna do this for now I usually have a preset setting that I use I want to turn off snapping but I don't always remember what it is so let's try 3 by negative 10 by 16 it's not zeroed up so let's try zeroing it out no let's try 25 And let's try negative 10 and let's put this to zero all right so that'll get us pretty close for now um, looks kind of weird but let's go ahead and compile and save now what I want to do is I want to make sure that while I have my camera selected scroll on down to auto activate and uncheck that box and then compile and save one more time now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a key binding that's gonna allow us to change our view so I'm just going to right click and I'm going to type in keyboard and I'm going to scroll up to the V for V key. So what's going to happen now is when we press the V key, we want to activate and deactivate cameras. So I'm going to get reference to both of my cameras. So what I want to do now is I want to, first off, let's go ahead and rename this one so we know what it is. We're going to call this our FPS camera. So now we want to deactivate our follow camera. And then we want to activate our follow. Or yeah, we want to activate our FPS camera and deactivate our um, follow camera so reason why I've left them over here 
is because I'm going to reuse them again and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to copy these two, paste them, I'm going to put it in right there and I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to deactivate my follow camera or my FPS camera, excuse me. We want to deactivate that and then we want to activate the follow camera. Now, here's the thing. We don't want to do it off of the press. We want to actually do a flip-flop. We want to toggle it. So let's go ahead and move these things out of the way for just a minute and we'll put in a flip-flop node. And that is going to be when we press it the first time it's going to change. When we press it again it's going to change. So do this and do this. Now we can move this back over here and make it clean and pretty. So that's going to let us have our view change. And if you decide later on you want to change your key, once you've already done this, now all you have to do is come back over here and select you and click it in here. And then you can see the input key. You can go back in here and change it to whatever you want. So it's easy to make that change. So if you ever want to add another key swap in, all you have to do is just press that control C, control V somewhere, and then change the key, what you use it for. So let's go ahead and compile and save. And let's give that a try real quickly. Hit play. You can see everything's good. Now we're going to make a couple more changes to that view change because it's going to screw some things up. So you can see I have no control of my mouse to move around and it looks a little bit screwy. So to fix that, what we want to do, that's why I didn't close out the player base, is we need to toggle a few things. Now, technically speaking, one of the things you're, you're going to notice is on your follow camera versus your FPS camera, you can use pawn control rotation. You can enable that there. So compile and save, but by doing that, what's going to happen is, see we're normal, we hit V, and now I can turn around and see my own face, and that's no bueno. We don't want to do that. You can use your mouse to look around, but yeah, it's just weird and it's not working. So one of the things we need to change is if we were to go back up here to our player base, use controller rotation yaw, we don't want to select that because that's going to select it for all of our cameras. Hey, how are you doing, bud? I uh, can't recognize your name. Um, I don't speak any Russian. I only knew a few words a few dozen years ago, but I haven't spoken any of it, so I forgot. So I apologize, but welcome. So uh, we want to enable our controller rotation yaw. So let's actually right click somewhere and let's say. Um, controller rotation um, set use we can try it this way set use controller rotation yaw and we want to go ahead and control C and control V so we can make a copy of it so when we tell it to activate our our follow our, our FPS camera um, from there we want to go ahead and use that controller rotation yaw and then whenever we stop using that camera and go back to the other one we want to disable that so let's go ahead and expand this out really quickly compile and save and now when we're walking around inside here we hit the V key and now as we're looking around we can look down and see our feet and we're controlling our character that way and we, we can't turn around and see our own face so that works out pretty good and if we want to go back we can just hit the V key and we're back into our regular view again so that's a quick and easy way of changing your view um, and it's you can toggle it by hitting the V key so since we're creating this as a template one of the things we also need to do and this is good to go on this guy we're, we're done with our player base for now um, we actually want to go ahead and look at our maps and in the the polygon city map all of the polygon asset packs their basic map where you can run around and check things out is going to be called demonstration it's the same across the board for all of them it's 
sorry. While I'm doing this, I have to keep hydrated. All right, so you guys have seen this map before. If you've seen any of my other videos, freaking love the map. It's great. Um, there has been some fixes to it. Lovely. But let's go ahead and I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I am going to hit File, Save Current As, and I'm going to save it as my lobby map. I'll explain that here in just a minute. I'm going to overwrap, uh, overwrap, overwrite my current one, and once I've got this done, we're actually going to set up our game mode overrides. So game mode override, we're going to use third person character. We're going to go ahead and save all, save selected. Another thing we're going to have to do if we're going to use this as a template is a try before you buy pack. There are no player spawns in here. So we need to add some random player spawns. But the first thing I'm going to do is something that annoys the living dog crap out of me with... I, I love the Cindy Studios asset packs. They're great stuff. But my OCDs, man, they just absolutely kill me. So I'm going to create some folders. First one is going to be... I always call it map. Shit. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to create another one called... Buildings. I'm going to create another one called... Roads. Gonna create another one called Streets. Another one called Props. Now, what I'm gonna do here, I know these are all map shit, map related stuff, so I'm just gonna select them all and drag them in there, and there we go. And now with the, the buildings, all I'm doing is I'm left clicking here, and then I'm gonna scroll down. There's a lot of buildings in here. So you can see we're into the road sections here. I'm using my mouse wheel and scroll up so I can find the split between them. Um, let's see here. Right in here, buildings, BLD is for buildings, and to there. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and left click, and then I'm going to let go of everything. Then I'm going to right click, and I'm going to come down to move to buildings and there we go we have now moved all of the building sections to the buildings folder and now that's going to clean up a lot of stuff I'm actually going to go ahead and create another folder here called um, environment this could be your bridge section and some of your other stuff here so I'm going to scroll down and find the end of all those and all I'm doing is I'm cleaning up their mess I like a clean um, world outliner. So there, we got all of them selected right now. And I'm going to right click and move to environments. Now I can scroll back up, click on the folder, minimize the folder, and it's gone. We'll do the same thing for props. And I'm going to have to do the same thing for vehicles as well. Lots and lots of props. So there, right click, move to props. Can minimize that. We don't need the roads and streets because I've incorporated them into the environments folder. And we'll go ahead and create one called cars. And we're almost done with this part. It's just a matter of getting everything neatened up and cleaned up. So, that's that. Everything's neat, everything's clean. See, now your world outliner, everything's minimized and you have a clean view of everything. It's less messy. You know that if you need to find something, oh, okay, and there, there's the cars folder. Now I can minimize that because I don't need it anymore, and I'm good. So, that being said, we need to go ahead and create a new one called Player Starts. And I like to put in about eight player starts. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab a player start and I'm going to drag it into the map and just kind of rotate it around a little bit. It's going to grab about eight different locations so that um, when you press play, then you're going to go ahead and just get a random starting point. 
the game does that for you. Unreal Engine 4 does that for you automatically. Doesn't really matter where you put them. You know, just spread them out a little bit so you don't know where you're going to spawn whenever you spawn in. Different angles, like start over here in the park. And that's lovely. Um, let's put another one over here. We can see where it's player start two, three, four. So this one is going to be the fifth one. So it's nice and easy to see how many you've got down just by looking at the, that number of player starts. And once I get the last of the eight down, then I'll go ahead and just put them into the folder. So I'm going to put another one in the park over here. And let's rotate it around that way. And we got one there, but let's put one here. So it doesn't matter really. We're just random spots around town. And I'll put one over here. And that'll be number eight. Alright, so now I can just left click on that, left click, you know, left click here, select all these guys, and drag that up and let go. There, nice and clean, neat, organized. So now when we hit play, It'll give us a random start location, and we can walk around, check out the, the map, everything's cool. Got the V key, so we can change our view if we want to. Um, now if we hit escape, and then hit play again, and we started in this park, and let's go right here. Okay, so you see, it's a random start each time. So the next thing we want to do is we want to take a look at the menu. Um, and actually, another thing we can do is we need a screenshot so that we can actually attach that in on the main menu. So you find a, a spot somewhere in town that you like and you can actually hit play hit V. This is where it comes in handy to have that first person view. Um, find a spot in town that you like and take a screenshot and that's pretty quick and easy to do. Um, I'm actually going to walk over here to the, and it probably would have been easier just to hit escape and hit play again, or actually select where you want to spawn in and right click and play from here. So this is where I actually want to be, but I'll show you that option here. Like, okay, but I actually want to start right about here. Instead of walking around the city, I can fly around, pick it out, right click on the map and select play from here. And there we go. I hit V and I could do it like this get our screenshot for our main menu but let's go ahead and, and add one more effect in here let's add some random NPCs to actually walk around so the first thing I want to do is I'm gonna go ahead and scroll out a little bit I'm going to go to my volumes at a nav mesh volume, not a volume, but a volume, and let's go ahead and you can kiss my ass. Thank you. Nav mesh by volumes. Go to my details panel so we can see. Let's go ahead and stretch it out. And we want to make sure that our nav mesh is going to encompass our entire city. It's okay if it overlaps, it does funky stuff, it doesn't really matter. So we're at 162, let's go ahead and put it at um, 175 by 175. And let's go ahead and change its position. That should cover the entire city nicely. If we hit the P key, we're going to see that it's going to cover all of the ground areas and not the water, not anywhere where it doesn't need to be. So that's great. We're good with that. And we're going to hit the F key. So we can actually take a look at it. Well, I'm actually going to go to my player starts, pick one, hit F so I can zoom in. Just a quick little shortcut to uh, zoom in. So I'm going to grab these two guys and I'm going to go ahead and put them into the map shit folder just to clean it up. So now let's go ahead and create an NPC. Go to our characters folder. And I'm going to create a new folder called NPC. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Blueprints folder. I'm going to grab my player base. 
I'm going to make a copy of it here. I'm going to hit F2, random, underscore, NPC. Then I'm going to go into it, and you got all this really cool stuff in here, and we don't need it. Get rid of it. Um, follow camera, don't need it. Camera boom, don't need it. FPS camera, don't need it. So we see we have our mesh, and we have a character. Well, lovely. Compile, save, go to our event graph, and here's what we need to accomplish. We need to event tick, and we need to... Let's go ahead and create this a little bit more complex to begin with, because we want some random characters, as the name says, random NPC. Ah, sorry, water. Lovely. So, what do we want to do? We want to have random mesh, and we want to have a random skin on that mesh. As we look at our viewport, we have our businessman suit, businessman shirt, businesswoman, female coat, male uh, jacket. You got all these different characters you can use. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So there's nine total. So it doesn't matter what we have selected here, but we have a total of nine. And now we do have multiples in here that we can work with. So let's first start off with the, the skeletal meshes. Let's compile, save, and since we have nine, what we want to do is we want to random... Uh, let's go with integer in range from... let's go from one to nine. You can do zero to eight, whatever you want to do here, but we want to have all these show up. So what we want to do here is we want to do equal equal. So if this is one, so we're definitely going to have to have a branch node here, so let's go ahead and add in a branch node. If this random integer is equal to one, then what we want to do is we want to Let's actually get a reference to our mesh. And we're going to use quite a few references to this mesh. So let's go ahead and set skeletal mesh. And then from that set skeletal mesh, we want to select the first one, which is businessman shirt. No big deal. So what we need to do here is we're going to be copying a lot of this stuff. So let's go ahead and control C, control V. And let's actually get this control C, control V. We're going to need more of them, but we can take a look here and we're wanting to connect all of them on the top node. I'll get these, then I'll add the rest of them in. And then we'll worry about cleaning it up. So this one will be two, this will be three, four, and five. I so said we'll clean it all up here very shortly. Because we need to be clean, neat, and organized, right? That's five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So let's go ahead and connect these up. So what this is actually going to do is, once we get it all together and functional, what's going to happen is it will pick a number between 1 and 9, and it will go ahead and change the skeletal mesh based on the number that it picked. 7, this will be 8 and 9. So now, in a matter of moments here, 
we will start doing the next part of this. So we've brought in this. Now we can make it go this way and then kind of space it out to work. We can drag it out diagonally, however you want to do it to make it neat and clean. But we need to connect the, the mesh to that. And we need to connect the faults from here to the input of this branch. So now, if we were to connect, you know, grab these right here and then control C and control, see that we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we can go ahead and start cleaning things up a little bit. And when we're connecting the faults to there, faults to there. And I want to try to keep everything consistently neat. But I want to go ahead and connect the, uh, the nodes here so I don't forget. Because I will, and I have, and I know me. I've seen me do it. Connect the faults to here, and then grab the last one. Drag it over here, faults to the end. Now, we can go ahead and start spreading these guys out. We'll grab all of them. And I'm actually going to go ahead and connect. But what I want to do is just kind of space them out. You can do it however you want. It's going to look a little bit on the nasty side and be hard to follow if you just do it this way. It's not hard to follow if you know what you're looking for. So we've screwed something up here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we forgot the other two. Knew we were missing something here. So again, connect the faults node to there faults node to there and we're good and now I want to connect the last couple up and I'm probably going to go ahead because I know me I want to clean things up more but we still need to connect the mesh and then once we connect the mesh on all of these then we, oh don't be an ass once we connect the mesh then we're going to have to go through each of these set skeletal meshes and then tell it which mesh to use. Now I can do this to actually um, change the material that the skeletal mesh uses as well but for now we'll keep it simple we're just going to change these. So we've got one more to go. Then we can come up here. We know that we've changed. The first one is correct. We can mouse over it and see that it's going to be businessman shirt. And then this one will go to businessman suit. Then business woman. Female coat. Just go down the list. Female jacket female police male hoodie and we have missed one somewhere so it's kinda hard whenever you're looking at it this way it's hard to kinda keep up so we know we got our businessman shirt and there we did we skipped one so businessman suit is the second one and that's correct business woman that's correct then female coat that's correct after that should be female jacket And then after that one, female police. This should be female jacket. 
Let's see, we got um, female police. After female police is male hoodie, which is correct. And then after male hoodie is male jacket. And after male jacket is male police. There we go. So we got all that correct. And this, in theory, should work just fine. If you want to clean it up more, feel free. But what I want to do is test it out first, compile and save. However, this is not what we want off of event tick. We want this actually to be off of begin play. So let's go ahead and break that. And event begin play. Then we want to go ahead and do that. It'll go ahead and, and handle all that and create the character for itself. And then we want to go ahead and move to our event tick. So to neaten this up a little bit, I'm going to select all this junk, everything but the event begin play, and I'm going to right click and I am going to collapse nodes and I'm going to call this the um, mesh manager. And it didn't save the name because it wants to be an ass holo mio. So I can just go back over here anyway and call this the mesh mixer. Lovely. So now it's cleaned it up considerably. There's a lot less junk here. So now off of our event tick, let's go ahead and, and give our NPCs a little bit of movement. Go ahead and compile and save just to be on the safe side. So we want to add in a variable this is easy, is moving question mark. So we want to ask, is our character moving? So we want to get a reference to that. We want a branch node. We want to ask, is he moving? If their answer is new, then we want to start moving. Okay. So from here, we want to, off of faults, AI move to AI move to and from that AI move to what we want to do is we want to get a reference to our our pawn which is going to be self so get a reference to self and then we want to go ahead and we want to get our destination all right and then Target actor we're not worried about because we're not telling it to go to somebody. If you were trying to make it go towards the player, then that would be what you would worry about here. So what we want to do is our, our set our destination to um, uh, random point in a reachable or navigatable radius or I'm going to use this one right here you want to get random point in navigatable radius and I'm going to move these over just a little bit more because the origin we want to get from our mesh we can grab that and what we're going to do is we want to get world location just that easy and then it's going to move this over a little bit and that's going to be our origin and our radius let's go ahead and give it 5000 that's how big of a circle area that it's going to look for to be able to say okay how far can i move when i do this um at that point we want to set is moving on the the end executable point here because while it is moving, we want it to say that, it, yes, it is moving. Okay? But on success and fail, here's what I want to do also is I want to know we're not moving anymore. But I want to add a delay in first so that we can add a pause. So on success, delay. And what I want to do is I want to give this delay a random time. Instead of it being a fixed amount of time, okay, he's going to walk over here, he's going to pause for two seconds and start moving again. 
I want to change this duration so we know that it's a float so let's right click right click thank you random float in range grab that connect that so gonna move these a little closer to neaten that up a little bit and I'm gonna set the minimum of one second and the maximum of seven seconds so he's gonna get to his destination and wait between one second and seven seconds and then he's gonna um, set is moving to false and then it's gonna tell him to start moving again so skip compile save let's drag it over here and let's go ahead and start dragging some of these guys into the map doesn't matter how they're facing just grab it chuck them in you want to set in about whew, a dozen or so because you want people to be walking around you want some some activity in the city so I'm gonna keep plopping them in the city until I see that I've reached about a dozen so that's six seven eight nine and they're gonna wander all over the city they have no limits now ten eleven twelve hell I might even put more than twelve it don't matter load it up it's fourteen I'm actually going to put 10 more to make it 24. We just want our city to look alive with people walking around, right? It's 18, 19, 20. Now, I didn't put any cars in that are actually moving uh, it's not difficult to do but not what I want to do for this so now when I hit play you see our NPCs are walking around town but as you can see they're different there's a male jacket a female with the jacket and a little skull shirt another one there and there was another one over here you're gonna have duplicates there's 24 um, people and only nine uh, skeletal meshes that's where it comes in handy to actually um, go back in later and change the actual um, the skins and you've got four skins per skeletal mesh so you know you you figure out the the, the possibilities for the male cop there's you know I think the male cops different but it still should have um, four different variations of even the, the the male cop four variations of female cop four variations of each of these meshes so there we go so let's move on to what I actually wanted to do here and I am going to go to hmm, where do I want to go Let's go to this spot right over here and again I want to go ahead and find a spot where I want to start I'm going to right click on the map and play from here and it's going to let me play from there and I'm going to hit V so that I can scroll in I don't actually like this car being positioned where it is so I'm actually going to go ahead and, and change its location I know it's kind of nitpicky But, you know, I'm going to get ready to take a screenshot. Play from here. Hit V so I can go into first person view. And I want to take my screenshot about right there. So I can see some stuff. So I'm going to hit the print screen key. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit escape. And I'm going to go ahead and load up GIMP. It's a little mouse dude down here. Gonna load up GIMP. And I'm going to control V and it's gonna paste the image in here. Since I have three monitors, it's gonna show my screenshots gonna be all three monitors. So 
I'm just going to go ahead and grab this image. And I can grab the whole thing if I want. But it's going to be skewed one way or the other. Which this is going to work out just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this. Control C. Control Shift V. And that's going to create a new image or paste his new image. I don't need the original. And I'm going to Control Shift E. And it's on another monitor so you can't see what I'm doing here. Not that I don't want you to see what I'm doing here, but, you know, whatever. And... Yeah, that's good enough. And I'm just going to call this... City Menu. And I'm going to save it as a PNG file. You can save it as a other format if you like. But... I don't need anything else in here. I'm going to go to my UI folder. And we are almost done with this. Go into my assets, images. I'm going to right click. No, I'm sorry, not right click. I'm going to select import. I'm going to go to the folder where I saved it. And steady menu. And there it is. Now I want to go into. Let's, let's go ahead and save all my come on you can do it thank you go into my widgets folder and I want to go to the main menu and I want to add that image to the background here so I've already got the background image so what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and close my random NBC we don't need him anymore images city menu I'm gonna go ahead and select that file Go back in here and come over here to my brush image and select that. Now, notice it did not change. If that R be the case, then let's go back in here. One, 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 and there we go. So you can see it's a little bit skewed. Um, and that's because the image size is bigger than the screen. So you can actually go outside the boundaries. You're not going to see it. So just stretch the image so it, it doesn't look stretched out. You can scroll out and just try to make the image look about right. And then you can kind of move it around to get exactly what you're looking for. And I think for what I'm doing, that's going to be good enough. Let's hit Compile and Save. And what we want to do is go back to our Maps. We want to go ahead and close Polygon City for now. Go to our Maps folder, Main Menu Map. Open that up, and let's hit Play in Standalone Game. It's going to give you your best look resolution-wise. There you go. Now you notice also got this black background here on these. And that's good. I'm going to leave that here so that it kind of highlights them a little bit. Normally I don't allow this to, to go in right there. And if you don't want that section of the menu to be covered, you can actually go back into your image, select your background, and try to scale it to where it fits a little bit better that way. So you can actually manipulate the image the way you want to. So let's try that and I'm actually going to scale it just a little bit more. And I just wanted to fill the um, the map in, and come on. I wanted to go just over that line of the red, because this to make sure that it goes behind it. Let's put this as negative five. So 
So that should work. Let's hit compile and save. Now if we hit play again, it's going to go back and take a few seconds to load back up. We're at the hour mark. We're done. So as you can see, it left that over there on the left, black, and showed just this right here. I could have gotten a little bit more crazy with my menu and had the animated characters and that kind of stuff. Um, also easy to do. But I didn't really care for this particular one. You know, I, I can. I've got that shown in other videos. So I don't really need to show it in this one. But if you guys think that I should go back and revisit it and clean up the menu a little bit more to where I can add that in there and actually have animated characters standing around, then that would be okay with me. But this is mostly my template, and it's going to be the template for the city one as well. So that's pretty much it. This is actually ready to package up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize everything we know that everything works so I'm gonna go back in here I, I me the way that I am there's one thing that I gotta have I, I gotta have I gotta have music it's just it's too bland in the, in the menu there just needs to be something music wise so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in um, I'm going to add in one that I know that I've already got to convert it over to a WAV format. Again, I have plenty of videos on that. Eek. Um, I like that one, don't get me wrong. Um, like I said, I'm trying to find ones that I've already converted to WAV files. Um... I've used that one quite a few times. Um... lovely okay so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna left click and I'm just gonna drag it in here and that's 32 megabytes it's gonna increase the file size a little bit um, then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and test play it here just so it, we know that it works okay lovely and then save all go back to my main menu widget then what I want to do is come back over to my audio folder, select, and the story goes on. I don't really need to select it, but let's go to our graph, and I'm going to scroll out, and I'm going to find an area that is empty, because, you know, this is my simple multiplayer template. I'm not going to show you that for free. Eh, you want it? Pay for it. All right, so event begin play. Um, can't do that. Never mind. Um, let's actually do that from the main menu map. Blueprints, open level blueprint. And what I want to do here is that has to stay in. Let's add in a uh, sequence node. So, therefore, when we first start off, it's going to do this also. And what I want to do is play sound at location. And I want to pick the sound, and the story goes on. The song is actually from, and I've mentioned this before a dozen times as well, it's from Techno Axe. The, yeah, all you got to do is just do a Google search for it, man. It, 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 good stuff, good stuff. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I get the file length of the song. And it's 191.92. So we're going to round that up to 192. I will go back to that. When you mouse over it, you'll see uh, your path, your cooking file path length, looping faults. Um, there's two ways to do this. Now, I'll show you this way, and then I'll show you the other way. Um, but you'll see the duration is 191.92. And if you want it to loop, you can actually come in here and then just put in a, a um, delay, put in the the length, which is 192, and then connect it back to here. And it'll persistently loop. But we're not going to do that. Um, 
Let me show you the correct way to make this into a loop. So if you look at your file here, we're going to right click on it and we're going to create Q. And then we're just going to go into it. And so we can see here, we're going to click on this, the wave player, and the story goes on. And all we have to do is click on looping. Just that freaking easy. Um, volume multiplier. So if we click on this and click on the output, with the output selected, we want a volume multiplier of 0 0.3. That's going to turn the volume down considerably so that when we're actually in the main menu, we're not getting our ears blown off. So now all I have to do is just select the queue that we just created, and that's it. Compile, save, and now when we hit play, music that doesn't blow our eardrums out. Okay, so the last thing I really want to do is no matter what I'm doing, what whether I go multiplayer or single player, it's going to carry me into this map. Multiplayer is just going to let me go in there and play at multiplayer with my friends and we can walk around take a look at the map and say, oh, this is awesome. Lovely. Okay, so go back to our main menu and there's our music. Exit game. The only other thing that I would do, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and package this and, and call this video quits. The only other thing that I would do to this map is actually add in. Um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and do another thing here, even though it's not necessary. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this maps folder because we're not using it anymore. I've already pre-saved that map as another map. So we're going to delete that. The only other thing I would do is I would go into the map and I would add in ambient sounds. Um, and I don't remember where I put those ambient sounds. Let me see if I can not be an idiot and remember where I put them. Um, again, I have not taken the time to organize all of my sound files lately. But I did have a new sound file that I picked up for a city. And I'm going to look for it really quickly. Where's my data folder? Data folder. And audio. Wow, oh, that is really freaking loud. That is really freaking loud. All right, so I'm going to go back in here to my assets audio folder. I'm going to drag that in here and we're going to go ahead and once it's in come on you can do it all I'm doing is just grabbing it from my file my manager or my yeah from my hard drive and I'm just going to left click and drag it in until I see the icon change to that and there we go so we know that it works and that it is freaking loud so what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click on it and I'm going to create a queue and I don't have to worry about renaming it I'm going to come in here that's lovely and to make sure that it's looping and I'm going to go ahead and select this my volume multiplier I'm also going to put that down to about a 0.3 because it was just really freaking loud so let's actually go into our maps folder, our lobby map. Uh, okay, I guess I didn't save anything, but shut up. And then I'm going to go to my blueprints, open level blueprints, and off of my event begin play, I want to play sound at location. You don't have to worry about giving it a location because it's going to play everywhere. Because we didn't set out, we didn't need to, but we didn't set up a sound attenuation system for it. So, streets, queue, compile, save, save. Come on, thank you. And now we go into this, we can play in selected viewport. Holy crap, Spackle, it's still out. Um, 
So let's go back into our, our queue again, and I'm going to change my volume multiplier to 0 0.1. a little better, still a little loud, and I've lowered my volume to 0 0.1. If that's still too loud, um, you can actually go into this, click on the little tab, and you have another volume multiplier. Let's try turning that down to 0 0.5, cutting it in half. Compile and save, and so this is done saving. Play it one more time. A lot better. We can just barely hear it in the background, and that's what we want. It's background sounds. So, that's delightful. We're good to go. So, let's go ahead and do a quick packaging. Everything's good to go for me. Everything is good enough. We're going to save all. We're going to, just for giggles, go back to the lobby map. We're going to excuse me, main menu map. We're going to select file, package project. We don't need to package it for everything. So here's what I want to do also. So I'm going to go to project settings. Since we don't want to package it for everything, we got maps and modes, everything should be still good on that. Description, uh, I don't really need to do anything with that. Um, target hardware, nope, supported platforms. Uncheck all platforms, uncheck everything, because I'm not packaging it for anything else but Windows. And then I can hit the X and close that, it's all good to go. Now we go to File, Package Project, Windows, Windows 64-bit, because nobody should be on Windows 32-bit. So, next thing I want to do is I want to create a new folder specifically for it. And I'm putting it on my F drive because that's my drive specifically for Unreal Engine 4 related stuff. I'm going to add new folder and I'm going to call this TB4 underscore or space um, city. And now I can go ahead and do that. Package Project, Windows, 64-bit, and then I want to go ahead and find that new folder, F Drive, TB4 City, selected folder, and let it do its thing. It's going to take a few moments to go ahead and package. Once it's done, we'll actually take a look at it, and I'm just going to drag that folder in here, because right now there's nothing in that folder. What we want to see is that this goes away, and this now has files in it. If not, then we know that we had an error and we got to fix something. We're not going to have an error. We're going to get this on the first try. I have confidence. I know that we can get it on the first try. This will be the try before you buy City Pack. And it's going to be my template that I use for quickly creating new versions for the different asset packs. Although it's going to say, it's probably going to say it was TB4 template as the name of the executable file. That may or may not be a problem. It's not really going to be a problem because, you know, um, worst case scenario, I can just make a clone of this and change the name of it. Now, there's one issue you, you may run into whenever you're, you're making copies or clones of something and then you're trying to package it again. There's going to be some files that are a part of the thing that will actually be a problem and you're going to have to go in and delete those files because it's going to try to use those as well. So I don't think we're going to have that problem with this the way I've got this set up. So um, it will be a problem the next time we go in here and do this. But to avoid that, that's why I left it as TB4 template and then whenever it finishes packaging the project that it's doing right now, then I can go in and change the name of the, the file or should be able to change the name of the executable file and it'll, it should work from there. Which I probably should do that because um, I'm not saying that 
some people are stupid, but um, to make it easier for people to quickly recognize, oh, this is what I click on, because it may not be evident for all people, because this is not a full shipping build. This is not a, a um, publishing build. This is actually a development build. So it may not be, you know, quick and evident for everybody. I probably should make these as actually a, a full build, but this works. This gets the job done. So when it, you see it compiling shaders, then you know you're just about done. All right, so as soon as it's done, you can go in here and check out the what it's actually doing. But it's about as fun as watching um, paint dry or grass grow. It's just going to be scrolling through files and things like that. Um, and there we go, packaging complete. It always puts it in a folder called Windows No Editor. So what I do is I go into that folder, make sure it's expanded. I'm going to grab everything, and I'm going to put it into the root folder. And then I'm going to delete the Windows No Editor folder. Now I'm going to run it, and it's going to always flag my Windows firewall. See, okay, lovely, it works. I can go to single player, and there we go. Walk around, we have sounds, everything's lovely. Hit escape, go back to the main menu, go to multiplayer, host, give it a name, make, and there we go. We now have a multiplayer server up, people can join, and there we go. Hit escape, go back to the main menu, and exit game. Now, let's see what happens when we actually rename that from TB4 template to TB4 city. And now, what happens when we double click on it? Nothing. It works fine. Okay, lovely. So that's all we need to do, and I'm just going to go ahead and TB4 City, I'm going to right click on that and add to TB4 City RAR. We're going to zip this up or package this up in a WinRAR file, and I will upload this, and this will be available for download. It's almost done. So let's see how big the file size actually came out to be. And that is TB4 City, 105 megabytes, holy crapola, that's going to take like 8 minutes for my crappy internet to, to upload. So, I will go ahead and upload that, I will get that onto um, my Google Drive account, and I'll have that linked out so people can download it and check it out. Alright guys, thanks for watching, I'm going to go ahead and kill this stream, it's been just over an hour, and we're done. So, I'm going to go ahead and upload that, and we'll see you in the next video.